Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios and Pro Mix Academy today and I am showing you how to do backup basics in Reaper. Uh, this is something that we cover in our Ultimate Reaper course but this is just a little sample of something that's very important if you don't want your work to be lost, let's say if a, a drive gives up in the middle of a session or overnight or whatever it may be, this is a really good way of having not just the project file backed up instantly, but having all of your audio files instantly record to two separate places, have auto saves, have everything belt and braces protected. Let's have a look. Let's switch to this video. So what you can see is just regular old Reaper. And if I save this project, I can save this anywhere. I'll bring this up, create a subdirectory for the project, copy all the media into the project directory. And I'll call this uh, backup test one. And because I'm copying all the media, if there were any files that already recorded into this project, that would already make sure that they came to the right place with the project file. Now, by default, there's no autosave. So if I go to options and preferences, which is always at the bottom of the options menu, whether it's Mac, PC, whatever it is, that comes up with a whole load of preference settings. And we're looking for project and in the project tab when you click on that there's project saving and there's a whole host of tick buttons that you can tick to change things so when you tick this button what happens is when i hit save on a project that updates the project but it also then takes the slightly older version of the project and makes that a backup file dot rpp dash back which means that if I changed something to change the mix by accident and then hit save in a lot of workstations, that's it. It's gone. Whatever you'd done, unless you can remember exactly what it was and put it back manually, that's it. You're done. And so that's da da da. But doing this keeps a backup. And then there are a couple of tick boxes underneath that. And you can tick one or another, it grays them out. If you tick timestamp backup, then every time you hit save, the previous version of the project gets saved as a file that's got the time and date. So you get a big list of old project files so that if several days down the line, let's say when you've been working on a big project, you realize that you're missing a file somewhere in there. You can go back hours, months, however long you need to, and find a copy of that project where that file was actually in the right place and then do whatever you need to to restore that. Alternatively, the keep multiple versions is what I have ticked and that just makes a backup file that grows in size and actually adds all of the timestamp backups into one backup file. Just means it's easier to deal with for me but then when I open that backup file uh, let's find a project to open a backup file on just for proof. Uh, if I go to opening backup files, here is a project that I've just been working on and that's the rpp.back file. If I double click that, that will give me a nice big list of everything because I, I did a little bit of prep on this a couple of days ago and then all throughout today, I've been hitting save regularly because you should. And if I've made a mistake, I can trace back as far as I need and open that particular version. And that will open, say, you know, 12, 30 noon from that, which is really, really useful. Going back to that preferences menu, there's also an every X number of minutes. So I've put every 15 minutes and then when not recording so that it won't interrupt the computer if you are actually recording a take, although you can change that to any time, it will save a timestamp file in the project directory as well. So if I forget to save for an hour, two hours, three hours, every 15 minutes, it's made a save file for me anyway. So that's really useful. And I can tick a box to save a timestamp file every 15 minutes somewhere else. 
So maybe on an external drive or on a network, I could have a server in another room uh, that every 15 minutes gets a new Reaper file. Uh, you could tick, no, save the project file every 15 minutes, but that's a little bit risky. And you can actually save the undo history as a file. So if you open up the project days later and realize that the last thing you did was a mistake, you can actually just hit undo as if you just had the project open. So that is all really useful. The last thing that I was talking about was uh, saving the actual audio in two places at once and how you do that. So to save the audio in two separate places, we're going to go to the project settings. That's in file and project settings. Now in here, there is a media tab. Uh, the first path to save the media files, I tend to leave that alone. And by leaving that alone, that will save files exactly where that project file is that we saved. Although you can change that if you like for some reason. And then the secondary recording path. I'm just going to add a secondary recording path just because I'm just going to put that in for now just to be simple. But you could have a second drive or maybe even a network drive just to have a second completely separate backup. And then everything else you can set as you like. But then when I hit OK, I can now hit record on a track. And if I right click on the record arm, I can go to the track recording settings. Now, if I would select multiple tracks, I can affect them all at once. And then right at the bottom, you can record to audio path primary, which is the project directory, secondary, which is the other drive or whatever other project directory, or primary plus secondary as invisible backup. And that does exactly what it says. It saves an invisible backup. So all of your files will go to wherever that is, second computer, second drive, wherever you've decided. And then if your main drive dies, you've got your project which you could have set the project file to go to somewhere remote and the actual audio files can all go somewhere remote. And then you've got a bulletproof backup system. I mean, belt and braces, you might have that secondary device then uploading to a cloud storage thing because then you've got very quick backup. But yeah, that is a very big solution. If you found this useful, then do check out the Ultimate Reaper Guide with me, Adam Steele, through ProMix Academy, where we talk about this and a lot more in immense depth, going right from the very start of how to set up Reaper for someone who's not really used a DAW before, but we then accelerate the pace and talk about how to record audio, go through uh, actually recording guitar amps, drums, uh, MIDI electronics. We talk about all the plugins that Reaper comes with, how to use separate plugins, how to do all sorts of stuff to get you up and running and mixing rather efficiently. So check that out through the link in the description. Thank you everybody and I'll see you soon.